for Josh Jackson behind. If uh, Josh could get a bit closer, we saw him trying in race one to just dive to the apex first and make a bit of a block pass, but it is fraught with risk, that. Jackson does seem to be closing on this lap, though, so don't think that Bailey's got this one sewn up just yet. Hand back out of the cockpit for Bailey just to remind Josh Jackson that there's a yellow flag here and that they both ought to slow down slightly, but Jackson seems to slow down a little bit less than Bailey, and so Bailey starting to come under pressure again now, just as I thought that he was looking fairly secure in the lead. So back down towards the chicane. I think we're going to have one more lap after this one, probably. We're lapping in the 1 minute 43s and 44s, so I think we've got time for one more lap here. Out onto the banking again, and Jake Bailey, well, as we saw yesterday, it's in the latter stages of the race that Jackson seems to have an edge. Across the start finish line again, onto the final lap of the race we go. And Josh Jackson's just set a new fastest lap as well, a 144.1, which is about six tenths slower than he went yesterday. So the pace isn't quite as quick in the warmer conditions, but it's quick enough to draw him alongside now, down towards the Dean Hairpin. So, yet again, we're in for a real grandstand finish with these two. Bailey holds the inside line. Jackson a bit too late on the brakes there. He was trying to carry the wider line in to get good momentum out of the turn. Just got a bit sideways there, a bit of uh, oversteer through the corner. Hasn't really cost him that much time though, he's still only a car length or so behind the leader and with still over half a lap to go, but only realistically one more genuine overtaking opportunity to come and you'd have to sense that that's the Tarzan hairpin where the yellow flags are still out. So if Jackson's going to do this, he may have had his last chance. Down towards Kirby, again, they both take that wide line in ignoring the first apex completely and just picking up the second kerb, carrying the speed nicely up the hill. And it's Graceland's, and then it's a yellow flag zone, so where does the move come for Josh Jackson, or is he going to have to settle for another second place finish? Jay Bailey starting to rack up the victories now in the second half of the season. This would be his sixth if he could hang on to the nine wins for Josh Jackson. So if he keeps going this way, he could keeps winning for the remaining races this season. Jake Bailey, he could actually top Josh Jackson's number of race victories. There are three races to go after this weekend at Donington Park. So four more races in total, and there will be just three wins between them now by the looks of it, because out of the final corner they're about to come. And for the second time this weekend, Jake Bailey is going to see the chequered flag and take win number six of the season. Great race between the two of them, as it was yesterday. And Jake Bailey takes the chequered flag from Josh Jackson in second place position. A really, really great tussle. Third place for Jeremy Crook, fourth Alec Livesley and fifth for Patrick Collins. Really improved in that one. Simon Fleet was sixth, Xavier uh, Brook was seventh, then Matt Pickford, Simon Woods and Richard Norris round out the top ten. Liz Walton and Ronnie Garrick were the last finishers, whilst James Kell, who was involved in that incident with Sam Bailey, he was a non-finisher, so was Sam and Richard Breland pulling off with mechanical dramas. This is the second win in a row now. Yeah, it's like deja vu from the race before, but yeah, good race, another long race. Josh kept me in check the whole way around. Um, didn't make it easy for me, but no, good race on that. Josh, that seems like another long race. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty long. Um, yeah, no, it was a good race. We've got a bit of a bad start. Uh, I think Richard come alongside me and a couple of others. So uh, yeah, we got in behind Jake eventually and then uh, yeah, it just wasn't quite enough time to get past him. So have you got any thoughts going into the final race of today? Uh, yeah, do better. So Jeremy, your third podium of the year, this is becoming quite a good year for you. I know, it's probably the best year ever actually, It's uh, it's been the most enjoyable, this series has been really good, really good for me, great people, good standards of driving, great fun. And it's such a pity that this is the uh, our last race at Rockingham because it's our local circuit, we're only 20 minutes down the road, so but there you go, we finished that one with the big banks, good. Third and final race here for the Mazda Super Series and we see Josh Jackson and Jake Billy still battling it out to the bitter end. However, with plenty of other Mazdas here to fill the track, they will be putting on a fitting tribute for this being the last ever time we'll be gracing Rockingham's Motor Speedway. So we're going to hand it straight over to Andy for all the action. Yeah, for the final time then, what's likely to be a fairly emotional race for some drivers. We are about to go racing at Rockingham. Jake Bailey and Josh Jackson make up row one ahead of Jeremy Crook and Alec Livesley. This based on the results from the previous race, so it's all a fairly familiar order in which they will start. Rockingham has been a very special place over the years. It's a shame to see it go. We 
know now that the future of this circuit will not involve, at least in the immediate future, uh, any racing as such. We hope the facility will remain. Who knows? We may be back in the future. But for now, for one last time, let's go racing. Down towards turn and one they go. Bad start made by Matt Pickford further back. But Josh Jackson this time around has got the uh, number 72 car off the line fairly well. Gets his nose in front of Jake Bailey as they run down towards turn number one. Wheel to wheel between the race leaders through the first corner. Down towards the Dean Hairpin. Don't forget about everyone else behind, though, because they're so preoccupied with each other. Look at that. Jeremy Crook nearly went up the inside. There's someone shooting to the outside. That's Alec Livesley, uh, who survived, of course, the dramas that happened in front of him between Sam Bailey and James Kelly in the previous race and actually came out of it uh, with a fourth-place finish, which was his best finish of the year so far. Down towards Yetwood, they go on board with Patrick Collins, who I think maybe received a bit of a love tap there as they turn through the corner. They're all safely through into the right hand and out Chapman curve. Into the piff path sequence of corners where Bailey leads the way from Jackson in second position. Third place looks to be Richard Breland, I think, or is it Livesley? No, it's still Livesley ahead of Crook, in fact. Where is uh, Richard Breland? Richard Breland, oh, of course, started from the back of the grid, didn't he, because he retired yesterday. So Richard Breeding, who's been a fast starter and a feature at the front of the field in both of the races so far, will have to work his way through the order. There is Richard. Look, the um, black, white, red blink uh, car. Then we've got side-by-side -side action behind. Number 19 there is Liz Walton, who we haven't seen much of this weekend. Likewise, number 10 uh, is Richard Norris. They were running side-by-side -side through the corner. And then hard on the brakes, James Kelly. You can see the green machine tried to work his way back through the field as well after what was looking like being uh, his best weekend of the season so far. He was on the verge of his first ever podium and unfortunately ended up out of the race down at uh, the uh, Tarzan hairpin. He's got uh, the number 10 machine of Richard Norris trying to come back at him here down towards the chicane, but he can't do it. Liz Walton's next in his sights. As they make their way out of the banking, and there he goes. Nicely done the inside of James Cal getting his way through the field fairly rapidly, although not quite as rapidly as Sam Bailey and uh, Richard Breland. I can also start from the back of the middle. There is Breland who's now on the tail of Simon Fleet. There's Matt Pickford in the yellow and then Martini liveried car. Jackson, again, had there been a genuine championship on the line here, he might have kept his foot in the door there, but it was always going to close, and it was always therefore going to result in contact if, unless one of them decided to back down. In the end, it was Jackson that decided to do so, and so still, Bailey is leading. Bailey has led across the start-finish line on every lap this weekend, apart from one. You would think, therefore, that it had been a pretty dull and processional dominant performance by Bailey, but that's been... It's been anything but that. He's had intense pressure from Josh Jackson all weekend long. We've thoroughly enjoyed watching the battling. Who is going to take this final victory of the uh, of the weekend? That is still up for debate as Jake Bailey once again defends into Tarzan. But because of the nature of this circuit, it's a lot of left-handers followed by right-handers, then left and right, then left and right. If you go in tight, you're going to run wide on the exit, yes, but it probably still means you're on the inside of the next corner. That was a mistake there from Bailey, though. He outbraked himself into the chicane. He was on that tight defensive line and didn't quite slow down enough. Now, that may mean that Jackson gets the better exit from the corner. Is it good enough to get alongside? Not quite. We will have time for one more lap. So this is it. The final lap of racing ever for Master MX-5s here at Rockingham. And Jake Bailey is having to really get his elbows out now. Josh Jackson to the outside line through the first corner. But he's been here before and not able to make the move work. Down towards the braking zone. Who's going to be the bravest? Inside line for Bailey, outside line for Jackson. They're pretty equal on the way into the corner. Now, is there going to be another tail slide here for the race leader? He's a bit more gentle with the application of the throttle on this occasion. So, Josh Jackson still can't find a way through, despite almost certainly being the quicker of the two. But he just, he, there's nowhere through. Bailey is defending so well. You don't have to be the quicker driver or in the quicker car to win a race. You just have to know how to defend. And Jake Bailey has put on a masterclass of defensive driving this weekend. And he only has to hold on for another half a lap. Down towards Kirby. Does Jackson go for the inside line? He doesn't. But then Bailey didn't run out quite as wide as he usually does either. Jackson may be slightly quicker off the turn, but Graceland's isn't really an overtaking opportunity. Tarzan is, though, and so a good run out of here could set Jackson up for the move down into the hairpin. And on the one previous occasion this weekend where he has been able to overtake Jake Bailey, this is where he did it, on the inside line. That inside line, though, is covered by Bailey on this occasion, so Jackson goes to the outside on the way into the corner, looking for the exit speed. He might have timed that perfectly. Look at that, he's fully alongside. It's the outside line down towards the chicane. They're going to lean on each other, banging wing mirrors as they go down 
around the school straight for the final time. Three more corners to go. Bailey on the inside. Jackson on the outside line. The final win at Rockingham Motor Speedway. Who is it going to go to? Over the curbs goes Josh Jackson. But I think that Bailey's done enough. Or has he? Jackson really tightens up the exit. He's alongside a drag race to the line. Side by side to the checkered flag. And who is it going to be? Get the cameras ready. It's a photo finish. And Josh Jackson takes it on the line by 69 one thousandths of a second. That was some send-off for a circuit that always has produced really close racing. Jackson from Bailey then with Breland on the podium. Jeremy Crook in fourth. Alec Livesley in fifth. Sam Bailey was a non-starter. That doesn't really matter. It meant that he got to watch what was an enthralling race from the sidelines. A great way to round out the action here at Rockingham. Josh, that was an epic final for the last race here at Rockingham. Yeah, it was definitely the best race I've had all year. Uh, Jake drove unbelievably well. Um, I got to lead for two seconds, but it was the two seconds that counted. So, uh, yeah, no, it was good. We had a great race. I kept on the back of him. Um, yeah, could not get past anywhere. And we just, I had to try for the end. So, uh, yeah, it was nice to come away with one win. That was an epic battle towards the end there, Jake. Yeah, I'm gutted. 20 minutes keeping him behind me and he doesn't get over the line. But, uh, no, it's a good race than that. What was going through your mind when you just seen him come past you? Well, he had a good run out of the hairpin um, and we got a bit tight into the start of the chicane and then I thought I'd be able to sort of hold him off. But he just must have got a better exit and dragged me to the line. That brings a close on this weekend's events here at Rockin' and Motor Speedway for the Mazdas. What a fantastic weekend of racing it has been with a lot of unpredictability as per usual. So join us next time for the last and final round at Donington Park. Hello and welcome back to the penultimate round of the BRCC Mazda MX-5 Super Series. This weekend we're in a very sunny Rockin' and Motor Speedway. Now I just want to quickly jump in to speak to Alec here before race one gets underway. Now Alec, do you have any good memories? Because sadly this is the last time we're going to be here at Rockingham. I had some good good results here in, uh, in Genetta's but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a great track. I do like track and it's, it is a shame to lose it. Now obviously you're about to go out for the first race of today. You're mid-pack but do you think you're going to be able to get high up? Oh, definitely. Always move forward in racing. Brilliant. Well, we'll wish you the best of luck and we're going to hand this straight over to Andy to run you for all the action. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Here's how the grid lines up then. Jake Bailey and Josh Jackson, as ever, at the front of the grid with James Kell with a strong qualifying on row two alongside Richard Breland. Sam Bailey and Jeremy Crook are next ahead of Alec Livesley and Matt Pickford on row four. Simon Fleet and Patrick Collins round out the top ten ahead of Simon Woods and Xavier Brook. Richard Norris and Liz Walton, whilst Ronnie Garrick is a newcomer at the back of the grid. 
Well, let's get ready to go racing then for 20 minutes. The first time this weekend here at Rockingham. Away we go. Good start by both front row men. A great start made there by Richard Breeland from the outside of row number two. He will make it three abreast for the race lead with Bailey on the inside. In the middle is Josh Jackson. And around the outside line is going Richard Breeland. It's the long way round, but it might be where the space opens up down at the traditional pinch point at the Dean Hairpin. On board with Josh Jackson, there is uh, Jake Bailey on the inside line. Bailey looks like he's going to lead. Where did Breeland get to, though? He's back out of it all. I think he's down there in about fourth place. He's actually found his way onto the inside line somehow uh, just ahead of Sam Bailey. On board with Matt Pickford looking backwards. That's Patrick Collins. Um, we're now looking forward from Patrick's car as he drops down the gears in towards Yentwood. This first right-hander around the outside there is the number 70 machine uh, of Javier Brook. Back on board with Patrick Collins as he turns now through Chapman Curve. It's a corner that goes on for quite a long time and then in towards Piff Paff on the full international super sports car long course this weekend at Rockingham. As Lindsay was saying, sadly the final time that we uh, that the BRSCC will race here. Final time therefore for many of these Mazda MX-5 drivers who have had fond memories of racing here, not just in Mazdas, but in maybe other forms of motorsport, indeed other forms of Mazda racing perhaps. On board with Patrick Collins and on the inside was Matt Pickford, but uh, well, Matt Pickford unfortunately not adding to his happy memories of Rockingham because he's just been off. Uh, Josh Jackson, meanwhile, has somehow lost second place to a reformed James Kell, and he retakes that second position away from James, but uh, James Kell having by far his most competitive showing of the season so far. James has a best finish so far of fifth one time earlier on this season. Well, he's now running third, but under pressure from Richard Breland uh, and Sam Bailey, both of whom have had multiple podium finishes so far this year. Sam is on six, and... Um, the number 81 car of Richard Breland has appeared on the podium four times. One of those cases was actually a runner-up uh, finish earlier on in the year. Back across the line they go, though, at the end of the opening lap. Single file throughout most of the field as they race down towards turn number one. This banked left-hander, which is easy flat out in these cars. Nice to see James Kell in a car that's always been very well presented, but not necessarily always got all that quickly. But now here he is at the sharp end of the field, and it's... Quite often we see this actually in Mazda driving, particularly in these Mark III cars, both in the Super Series and the Super Cup, is that it takes drivers a couple of years sometimes to get onto terms with the car, but then all of a sudden they will arrive at a track, everything will click, and they'll start asking themselves why they hadn't been able to do that um, earlier on. And Jake Bailey, well, it's been a really good defensive drive, this. And Josh Jackson, despite being arguably the quicker of the two, hasn't yet been able to find a way through. He's building back up to another challenge here, though. And there's a gap on the inside line. He's going for it this time. Josh Jackson is there. Do they rub panels? Not quite. That was a peach of a move for Josh Jackson. He goes through. He takes the race lead. Now, can Jake Bailey fight back? Or is Josh Jackson going to be able to deliver on the promise of the, the pace that he seems to have? Can he pull away from Bailey? Or is he going to be a sitting duck in the slipstream, I wonder? Out of the brook chicane they go. You could sort of see that coming, though. He carried good speed through Graceland. has got the inside down towards Tarzan. Bailey's had a good exit from the chicane, though, and he's back in the toe as they cross the start-finish line. <clears throat> down towards turn one, they go once again. And Jake Bailey it is, who is trying to use the slipstream now to find a way back through to the race lead that he's held all race long through turn one. He's trying to get at the inside line. Is there room? Is there room? There might be. He's pushed down below the white line, but he's there. Jake Bailey's back up the inside. Fantastic stuff. And Jake Bailey goes back into the race lead. So all that hard work undone by Josh Jackson there because he just left a chink of an opening up the inside line. Battle lines drawn now, though. Josh Jackson will not be happy to settle for second place. And it was a fairly robust move, that by Bailey. There was no contact made, but that was only really because Jackson sort of jumped out of the way when he realised that Bailey was going up the inside below the white line, which is, which is perfectly legal. It's not out of bounds, but um, it was a very, very commanding and committed move there by Bailey. Jackson now needs to try and pull a similar move on Jake to retake the race lead up towards Graceland. This is where he started to challenge a lap ago, getting a good run through the left-hander and then just slotting his car up the inside down at Tarzan. Is he able to do the same thing again? He's right there, but Bailey's wise to it this time. Look, hugs the white line down driver's right, so Jackson sends it down the outside instead. Watch for the switch back, gets to the late apex, gets the power down a bit earlier as a result. The wheel is a bit straighter too. He's alongside once more, but on the outside line, wheel to wheel, wing mirror to wing mirror. There's a bat marker up the road that hopefully is not going to be a factor because this is the final lap of the race. Through the Brooks came for the last time, and Jake Bailey, as long as he gets off the corner well, is going to take a fifth win of the season. 
season through the final left-hander up onto the banking across the start finish line and Jake Bailey does it he takes the victory in race number one here at Rockingham Josh Jackson has to settle for second but it was great entertainment watching the pair of them third for Richard Breeland James Kell holds on to his best finish of the year in fourth ahead of Sam Bailey fifth then it was Jeremy Crook Alec Livesley and Simon Fleet in that order ahead of Patrick Collins who eventually did get ahead of Javier Brook Matt Pickford was next ahead of Simon Woods Richard Norris Liz Walton and Ronnie Garrick finishes his first race in 15th Jake, congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Um, it's one of the longest races I think I've had all year. Uh, Josh kept me through the whole way around um, and we had a bit of swapping at the end, but it was a really good race. So that was an epic battle out there with Jake. I mean, he just pinned you. Yeah, it was very close. Um, I got away quite well. James Kell managed to sneak past. Um, so I lost the first three quarters of the lap behind him and then Jake managed to pull out a bit of a lead, six, seven car length. So I pushed really hard and caught up to the back of him. Um, but yeah, just not quite, quite enough on the last lap. It was a good move by Jake, so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens later. That looked like such a tough race out there. Obviously, you started fourth, but you've come third. I did start fourth, yes. Had to get past James Kell. Uh, he made it pretty tough, but uh, pretty good overtake into the hairpin. Just got my head down and uh, tried to catch the front two, but, I mean, they were off and away, weren't they? But had good ringside seats to their battle, so it was, uh, it was entertaining. Race two is about to get underway here at Rockingham for the Super Series and we have Jake Bailey in P1, Josh Jackson P2 and Richard Breeland P3 after yesterday's event. Now the light showers this morning has left the track a little bit greasy in certain areas so it's going to be a very interesting one to watch. So Andy, we're going to hand it straight over to you to run us through the grid. Yeah, thanks Lindsay. We've got uh, a resumption, hopefully, of the battle we saw yesterday between Jake Bailey and Josh Jackson on row one. Richard Breeland and James Kell make up the second row ahead of Sam Bailey and Jeremy Crook and then Alec Livesley and Simon Fleet on row four. Patrick Collins is next ahead of Javier Brook, Matt Pickford, Simon Woods, Richard Norris, Liz Walton and Ronnie Garrick with his first race under the, his belt. Now looking towards the front if possible or at least try and work his way a bit closer to the top ten. On board with Patrick Collins there, Matt Pickford we've got an on board camera with as well. As the lights go out, away we go for the second time this weekend. Richard Greenland makes a good start from row number two. He goes down to the inside immediately. Bailey has his nose in front for the race lead but Richard Breeland is trying to dive through on the inside of Josh Jackson for second position as well. Jackson risks finding himself hung out to dry here down at the hairpin because everybody else seems to be aiming for that inside line. How's it all going to pan out though? Bailey has the lead, there's no doubt about that. What's going to happen for second? Breeland on the inside with two wheels over the kerb. Jackson around the outside, there goes Alec Livesley right around the outside of everybody uh, and out onto the grass as a result. We're on board with Patrick Collins who's going to suddenly get a big run on the number 15 car as it's delayed off the corner. Oh, contact there as well. Simon Fleet goes halfway around at least. I think that was Javier Brook got into the back of him. Patrick Collins, very nonchalantly, one-handedly, makes his way through Yentwood and into Chapman Curb. A, a very, very lively first part or first half a lap of the race. It looked as though it was situation normal at the front of the field, though Bailey from Jackson at the uh, head of the order. You can see that uh, after the overnight rain that uh, Lindsay mentioned, it is now quite bright. So the track has actually dried out quite a bit in the last 20 minutes or so. So pretty much bone dry uh, circuit now for the uh, drivers to contend with Jake Bailey there he is leading the way out of Gracelands down towards Tarzan after that sensational duel that he had with Josh Jackson yesterday James Kelly's once again third with Sam Bailey fourth now and Richard Breland down to fifth so Breland having briefly challenged for second um, at the start of the race is now has slipped down the order slightly whilst James Kelly is still looking for this first podium of the year well, he's back in third place for the time being Patrick Collins had a good start. He's now become a part of the Jeremy Crook, uh, Alec Livesley and Simon Fleet battle that was raging on yesterday. And there's Javier Brook, with whom we saw Patrick Collins battling in yesterday's race. He's a few places further back now. Out onto the pit straight they go again. And there's Sam Bailey attacking for fourth position, taking uh, some of the pressure away here from James Kell. It's Richard Breeland rather than, in fact, Richard Breeland make one come through, hasn't he? So Breeland's gone fourth now sets his sights on James Kell, but whilst these two are scrapping, it does take some of the pressure away from Kell, but James is very early on the brakes into the Dean Hairpin, or maybe Sam Bailey was just very late on the brakes. Either way, Bailey goes from fifth to third in one round the outside manoeuvre. That was very brave stuff indeed, but Sam Bailey now gets himself onto the podium. James Kell comes back at him up the inside line, though. Can he get the car stopped? Looks like he will. Already a much more lively start to race number two than we had at any point, really, yesterday. It may have been a great battle for the race lead, but everyone, I think, was minding their P's and Q's a little bit yesterday. 
now they were into the middle part of the weekend and the uh, action is starting to really heat up out on track. So James Kell third, Breland's now fourth again. So Bailey was third, well he was, he, he was fourth, then he was fifth, then he was third, now he's fifth again. And all of that in the space of about half a lap. This has really allowed the top two to open up the advantage, although they were likely to be able to do that anyway, given their pace earlier on in the weekend. Kell back into third. Richard Breland looking to try and uh, replicate his podium finish from yesterday, if he can. There's Patrick Collins working his way out of Graceland's down towards Tarzan Corner.